everybody, welcome back to my Bloomborough and Bloomborough Commander set review. Today we are covering the mono black cards that are playable in Commander from the upcoming Bloomborough release, which is August 2nd, 2024. My name is Nathan, this is the Salty Productions YouTube channel. If you enjoy this type of content, leave a like down on the video, I appreciate it and it helps me out immensely. And feel free to subscribe if you like more magic content. Um, I'll have the rest of the colors coming out here soon. We already have the white and the blue already posted, so check those out. And I'll have links to all of those down in the description below. And without further ado, let's jump right into it, starting with Bone Cash Overseer. One mana, one one score a warlock. We can tap it and pay one life to draw a card. Activate only if three or more cards left your graveyard this turn, or if you've sacrificed a food this turn. Now, Bloomborough introduced a new mechanic called foraging, which means we can exile three cards or sacrifice a food to forage. And then that typically gives some sort of benefit to our deck. Um, so this can be shortened to essentially draw a card activate only if you've foraged this turn. Um, and also I mentioned that because there has been a new sort of archetype created with squirrel self mill decks that care about putting cards in your graveyard um, in addition to creating and sacking foods. So some comparables here, Dockside Chef um, has the ability to sack an artifact or creature for two mana to draw a card or something like a Dark Confidant which can essentially draw you an extra card every turn. Um, so you know, there's not a direct comparison here having a one mana pay one life to draw a card, which is why I think this is a very efficient and pretty awesome pick for these new self mill squirrel decks. So um, what is sort of the decks that they would fit in? So Igra, Eater of All, cares about foods. Um, and then you have, of course, the classic Sam and Frodo combo from Lord of the Rings, which is a food deck at its core as well. Um, but I do think that you need to be foraging or doing something with food to run this card um, and to be an efficient source of card advantage, but if you are, then you can reap the benefits of a one mana draw an extra card each turn. Next, we have Coiling Rebirth, five mana sorcery. We can gift a card to an opponent. We turn target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then if the gift was promised and that creature isn't legendary, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 1-1. One, one. So we've seen this effect before, um, being able to essentially reanimate two creatures. Now I say two creatures, what I really mean is for this particular effect, you're creating one creature, but then you're, you're really creating a half of a creature, we'll call it, because you only get the enters the battlefield ability or whatever it is that you care about that is the one one it could be a static ability or a death trigger for example uh, but i bring up ever after any incarnation technique here because there are um, some of the few options in black that allow us to reanimate essentially two creature cards from the graveyard to the battlefield and of course i think the um prime targets for this would be like your garys to close out games kakushos to get that giant uh life swing and so um, both of these do not care about their power and toughness and really just care about either their enters the battlefield or leave the battlefield type of triggers. So I think you'll see a lot of this in decks that already run Grey Merch, Vasfidel, or Kakusho. And of course, I think for commanders, you want to be in some sort of a reanimation style of decks so or Rami of the Dead Tide or a Rafine deck. Um, and of course, it really depends on the creatures that you're running as well. If you're running a lot of bombs to throw in the graveyard, then you want this more. Um, if you're running a lot of low cost um, cards. So like Rafine, for example, a lot, some Rafine builds run a lot of low to the ground creatures because you want a lot of attacking creatures. Um, so, you know, maybe you run like a Grave Titan or something if you're in the Rafine deck because uh, that makes tokens and is more valuable. So um, there's definitely a few options out there for Quilling Rebirth and it is a decent reanimation spell. Next, we have Consumed by Greed. Three mana instant, we can gift a card to an opponent. Target opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control if the gift was promised, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Now, I didn't talk about this really on the last card here, but also I think that gifting a card can potentially have upside if you can politic it to curry political favor with the table. Uh, if you need somebody to uh, potentially draw a removal spell, it's useful there. If you just want to give it to the person who's behind the most, that's great too. Um, or if you really, if you just wanna take some heat off of you, you can even give a card to the arch enemy <laughs> at your own peril, of course. Um, so I think that there's a lot of politicking that can be done and I do like this design. I really like the design and play pattern of gifting resources to your opponents because it is not necessarily group hug, but I do like the play pattern of accelerating the game, making sure players are getting resources, uh, fixing the mana screwed player, et cetera, et cetera, with these types of effects. Now, consumed by greed, I think the actual effect 
is playable in certain decks. Um, if you specifically care about edicts or sacrifice abilities, um, something like, I mean, Turgrid might want this, but I mean, other than if you're if you're not uh, a total jerkwad, you're probably not playing Turgrid, but this is just one of those very few effects that cares about um, sacking a creature with the greatest power among the control. So we've seen this before, um, specifically like Crackling Doom, which I do run in my Mardu decks. Um, now it's not a three for one, but it is some card advantage because we can get the creature card back from our graveyard to your hand. So it is essentially a two for one on one opponent. Um, and it doesn't put you down a card. So would you run Consumed by Greed in a generic deck? It just depends on your meta, I think. If you run into a lot of indestructible type of decks in your meta, um, it's or like Hexproof, for example, if there's a lot of Voltron-y type of Hexproof or like Aura decks, um, this might be a, a better option for you to, uh, to uh, combat your meta. Um, but we, of course, have the ultra staples of Deadly Rollick. You know, I don't think this beats out a free removal spell, but it is meta dependent because uh, some of these just can't uh, get around Hexproof. And so um, this is where that card is another option. Um, if you are limited to only black for uh, edict effects that are targeted kind of sort of. All right, next we have Cruel Claws Heist, two mana sorcery. You can gift a card, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose an online card from it, exile that card. If the gift was promised, you may cast that card for as long as it remained exiled and men of any type can be spent to cast it. So we've seen this effect before with Thoughtseize, of course, an absolute modern stable inquisition of Kozilek. We've seen these before and the question is, is a Thoughtseize style of effect playable in Commander if you get to cast the card? Because you are still trading this card for your opponent's best card in their hand. Um, it also disrupts combo decks, which is kind of nice. I think in Commander, you probably want to care about casting thing from, things from Exile in order for this to be worth it. Um, typically, you want three for one effects, right? Because if you can um, make three opponents discard a card then that's essentially you going up one card so this one isn't necessarily you drawing a card although you draw a card off of it you pseudo draw off of it um so I, I i don't think that you'll see a lot of this in commander but it is an interesting proposition that i would like to experiment with um again the primary reason why we never run thought seizes is because you go down a card and the target player goes down a card right the other two opponents are still left untouched, and so you really put yourself at a card disadvantage. But with Cruel Calls Heist, you uh, get the card yourself, and so you stay even, but only one opponent goes down a card. So maybe you save this to um, a neuter the arch enemy's hand. Um, I'm not exactly sure how you'd play this, but extra synergy if you care about casting things from exile, such as a Prosper style of deck, although um, <laughs> everybody already sa always says, oh, this, is, this goes into Prosper. Um, and I don't know that this would make the cut in a Prosper deck necessarily, uh, but it's just a stand-in for any deck that cares about casting from Exile. So Crew Claws Heist, interesting pick, will definitely tear up standard in my opinion, but um, probably not as frequent in Commander, but interesting nonetheless. Next we have Dark Star Augur, three mana two through with Offspring for a black, flying at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand, you lose life equal to its mana value. So this is playable, I think, only in decks that want very low to the ground creatures. We've seen cards like this before with Dark Confidant and Keen Duelist, but Keen Duelist gets you the opposite player's top card. Um, you lose life equal to that mana cost. So it's really the question of do you want two Dark Confidants on your board at once. And I think if you do just for that turbo card draw, then this is an absolute all-star. Also fits into your bat style of decks as well. But if you are taking, uh, I would say if you run a lot of three CMC and four CMC and above cards, I would not consider this card at all because it's just too much life loss. But if your deck primarily has a lot of one and two drops, so for example, the Carrick style of combo decks that are running like Vamp Tutors and like one mana low to the ground effects, 
then this is uh, uh, also playable. Or the, just that you're gaining a lot of life as well. I think Carrick is, is nice too because it can gain you a lot of life. Personally, I run a Carrick Extort style of deck, so um, I'll be considering throwing this into that deck. Um, and also, I think that this would fit into rats. So like if you're running a rat colony style of deck, this can definitely go in there um, because of course with Rat Colony, if you're running 25 copies of Rat Colony, chances are you're going to lose essentially four life a turn um, if you have two of these on board. So I think that is definitely an option. And the flying is a nice bonus if you care about getting in for some evasive damage. Next, we have Dire Sight, which, my God, Nathan, why do you have a bare bones common on this list? Well, I'll tell you, sir, it is a three mana surveil two, then draw two cards, you lose two life. We've seen this with Read the Bones, and nobody plays Read the Bones because it's been power crept out of 20th 24 Commander. Now, I understand that argument. However, <laughs> you will notice a pattern in my videos that boy do I like two mana draw twos. And while this is not a two mana draw two, it is a three mana surveil two, then draw two. So for any deck that wants to be self milling, this is your perfect turn three play, right? There, of course you can be ramping in the early game, but self milled decks want to be self milling turns one through three generally. Um, so Dire Sight does that. And there are not as many effects that throw cards in the graveyard and allow you to draw two with that card selection built in. So Dire Sight, I think is just one one of those uh, fruits and vegetables types of cards that will silently do work for you in the early game without being flashy. I think this really is a good contender for any sort of self mill style of deck with black. Um, I will be considering throwing this into my Cathro Aspect Warper deck, which desperately wants to be filling its graveyard with keyworded creatures turns one through four, essentially. So Dire Sight, interesting fruits and veggies type of cards at the common level, and also pretty great in uh, Popper EDH as well. Um, just another nice card draw style of effect. Next we have Maha, it's Feathers Knight, which is such a cool name. Five and a six, five elemental bird with flying and trample, ward, discard a card, creatures opponents control have base toughness one. My gosh, is this a game warping effect? Um, and if you bring this as your commander, I am scared for you, kind person. Um, so this is sort of like a sudden spoiling combined with a Toxril the Corrosive, kind of, sort of. Although, my god goodness, Toxril combined with Maha on the field is absolutely brutal. I think that Maha is one of those cards that will get you killed, if I'm being honest. Its effect is so powerful, it is so powerful that it, that it will get you killed. Um, and people will just freak out at it. I know if I am a token deck, you probably don't care about this as much. This will definitely be freaking out your opponents. Um, and I think this best combos in any sort of Rakdos deck that wants to be dealing one damage to things, um, just to finish off your opponent's creatures with a single spell. Um, so this again is going to create a lot of salt at your commander games. Um, and a word of caution if you end up running this card as your commander, because you will be arch enemy out of the gate next we have osteomancer adept two mana two two score warlock with death touch you can tap it until end of turn you may cast creature spells from your graveyard by foraging in addition to paying their other costs uh, if you cast a spell this way the creature enters with a finality counter on it which means that if it would die exile it instead and of course to forage like we already mentioned exile through gusher graveyard or sack of food so this is going to go in that same sort of squirrel of uh, foraging type of deck um, we've seen oh and another example here i actually kind of did a two for one with this particular Particular example. So Scavenger's Talent is another new effect from Bloomboro. Uh, pay one mana for an enchantment class. Whenever one or more creatures you control die, create a food token. This ability triggers only once each turn. We can pay two whenever you sack a permanent target player mills two cards, which will probably be yourself because you're presumably in a self mill deck. Or you can pay three at the beginning of your end step. You may sack three other non land permanents if you do return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. So both of these cards fit into this new sort of squirrel self mill archetype where you want to be throwing cards into your graveyard. Um, and then Osteomancer Adept in particular grants you a lot of card advantage if you continue to sack foods and, and cast creature spells. Or 
Terra. Exile cards from your graveyard to cast creature spells. Um, Scavenger Talent, same thing. So uh, again, uh, Egra Eater of All is kind of a stand-in here. Of course, you can play this in Chatterfang if you're running Chatterfang as a self-mill type of build, um, but you definitely want to care about food or self-milling for these cards to be playable. Next, we have the black version of the Season Cycle. Season of Lost, five minutes sorcery, choose up to five witches worth of modes. You may choose the same on more than once. We can pay one each player sacks a creature, pay two draw a card for each creature you control that died this turn, or pay three each opponent loses X life where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. My goodness, is this an oppressive effect. So I think most often you'll probably see this cast for uh, the first mode three times and the second mode once. So each player will sack three creatures and then you draw at least three cards for five mana, that is pretty crazy. Uh, that is incredibly good. Um, and of course, if you care about sacking things, you have your Tesa, Karlov, and Marin aristocrat style of decks. Um, of course, aristocrats want these a lot. Um, reanimation style of decks might even want this too. It doesn't specifically mention reanimating, but um, just the ability to um, uh, get that bonus damage if you care about the number of creature cards in your graveyard off of the third mode as well. Um, I think Season of Loss is probably, I, I would say you're probably going to see the least amount of variability in this particular season across the um, different cycles, just because I think most of the time um, you're probably just going to see that uh, first mode three times, second mode once, although the... Uh, inverse if we were to change it up a little bit so it could be a five mana five edict effect which is essentially a board wipe but at that point you might as well just play an actual board wipe like damnation for a little bit cheaper um so or if you wanted to you could also uh choose the second mode twice and then the first mode once so that you sack one creature and then presumably you've had other creatures die during the turn with your Phyrexian Altar or whatever sack out you have on the field to draw an absolute butt ton of cards. So I think that this card can definitely generate a ton of card advantage in Aristocrat style of decks. Um, so the question is, do you run it outside of Aristocrats? And I think it's probably modal enough to still make the cut in just a generic black deck. Like I'm just thinking like my Carrick deck, for example, which is more like extort uh, focused. Like, would you run this in that deck and I think um well that deck doesn't care about sagging creatures or um creatures dying so mm, maybe not maybe it doesn't make the cut in a generic in a generic black deck outside of the aristocrat style sub theme it's just that so many black decks care about dying in some capacity that this really does go in like most black decks but those black decks that don't care about the um sacking or drawing from creatures dying i don't know that it makes the cut um so anyway season of loss i think is still just generically uh, pretty great. I don't know if it goes into every deck, but boy, is it an all star in Aristocrats. Star Snape Cleric, two mana, two one, Bat Cleric with offspring for three mana, aka two and a black. It has flying. This creature can't block. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Um, so I just mention this because it is a yet another effect that allows you to deal damage whenever you gain life. So if you are already running Veto Thorn of the Dusk Rose and Sanguine Bond, and you're looking for another style of effect, um, this is another option for you. Then we have Valley Rot Collar, 2 mana 1 3 Squirrel Warlock with Menace. Whenever it attacks, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of other squirrels, bats, lizards, and rats you control. So I think this pretty much just goes into tribal decks. Of course, squirrels, if you're going wide, Chatterfang is going to be a great option here. Oh, some comparables, of course. Malakir Blood Priest um, cares about the number of creatures in your party, um, but it's on an ETB. Or you could run like a Mishra Claim by Gix, which does a similar thing where X is the number of attacking creatures instead of the um, tribal count. So, of course, this goes into your Chatterfang style of token go wide decks. And I think this makes a great include with rat decks, if I'm being completely honest, because, of course, rats tend to go pretty wide on the battlefield. And this will deal a ton of damage, especially if it can survive combat. Although I wouldn't 
wouldn't count on this getting in more than once. So if you look at it as sort of an ETB, uh, kind of, sort of, because you're just going to be using it once, um, it will probably, you know, deal out, I don't know, six or seven each opponent, and you'll gain six or seven uh, as the sort of base case. So, uh, but you do have to wait a turn for it. So that does suck just a little bit, but definitely an option for your go wide squirrel decks. Next, we have Hazel's Brewmaster, 4 and a 3 4 Squirrel Warlock with Menace for some reason. <laughs> Whenever Hazel's Brewmaster enters or attacks, exile up to one target card from your graveyard and create a food token. That doesn't really matter. What really matters is foods you control have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Hazel's Brewmaster. So, this is most comparable to Agatha Soul Cauldron, which we recently saw from Wilds of Eldraine. And these cards tend to be combo machines because you can combo it with both Devoted Druid and Kikijiki. And I believe how this combo works is Devoted Druid will, let's see, so when it enters or attacks, you exile the Devoted Druid. And then as the foods you control, they all have Devoted Druid's activated abilities and artifacts that are not creatures do not care uh, about minus one, minus one counters on them because they're not creatures and they don't have a toughness. So essentially you can just tap them for mana, put the one, one counters on them and get infinite mana that way. Um, also, you can exile a Kikijiki out of your graveyard to give all of your foods the Kikijiki activated ability, which makes them um, for further foods that can create more foods. And so you get, I believe, an infinite number of 2-2 two -two hasty Kikijikis. Oh boy, we broke Kikijiki. <laughs> So oh, this thing is just going to be a combo machine. Um, I see, I don't know if it's CEDH playable, but it's one of those cards where if you already are running Devoted Druid or already running Kikijiki in the colors that allow for Hazel's Brewmaster, it's just another potential line for you. So another card to sort of tutor out, um, especially if you're in green, um, you have like food chain and things like that. So um, yeah, moving on, we have Swarm Yard Massacre, five minute sorcery, create two, one minute green squirrel creature tokens and each creature that isn't an insect rat spider squirrel gets minus one minus one until end of turn for each creature control that's an insect rat spider or squirrel so this is just a great board a tribal board wipe of course this goes into your squirrel type of decks um Let's see, because you want to be going wide. And then Ash Coat, of course, is your rat sort of poster child or rat commander. Um, so it's great in rat decks as well. Um, I spill, I haven't really looked into like what an insect tribal deck looks like. I'm assuming they probably also go wide. I mean, I think spiders go wide as well. Uh, but really, it's just a great board wipe if you're in any of these tribes. And it's really sort of just an auto include, I think, in those types of decks. Next, we have some honorable mentions. So those are all the playable cards that that we covered for black. Um, so starting with Stargaze, X black black, look at twice X card from the top of your library, put X cards from among them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard, you lose X life. So this functions very similarly to Bitter Revelation, uh, which if you consider them for the same amount of cost, so in this case, X would be two, they function the same way where we're looking at the top four, we're putting um, two of them into your hand and the rest in your graveyard and losing two life. Um, of course, Stargaze being the strict upgrade from Bitter Revelation because you can um, have it be modal and put any amount of X into it. There's also Discerning Taste as another comparable as well, which is one mana cheaper. Um, and I just wanted to mention this because if you're already running these types of effects, you probably want Stargaze um, just as a self-mill type of effect, or if you care about just big mana, uh, big mana self-mill decks, which I guess I don't know what that would look like necessarily, but uh, this is an interesting uh, card for those styles of decks. Next, we have Early Winter, five mana instant at the common rarity. Choose one exile target creature or target opponent exiles an enchantment they control. The only reason why this is in the list is is because black is sorely hurting for enchantment removal in commander of course you have feed the swarm which is uh, the most meta option to get rid of enchantments um, or you have the recent from wilds of eldraine shatter the oath which is a five mana you destroy target um target enchantment uh early in winter gets around indestructible enchantments but the the opponent only has to pretty much have one on board to nail the one that you want to get off the board so is it good no but is it another 
pretty much unplayable option for black decks to get rid of enchantments? Yes, it is. And so if you care about removing enchantments uh, and you want an instant with that, uh, then early winter is an option for you. Next, we have Husk Burster Swarm, an 8-mana 6-6 six, six elemental insect. This spell costs one colorless, less to cast for each creature card you own in exile and in your graveyard, and it has Menace and Death Touch. So the most comparable card here is Writhing Necromass, which is a 7-mana 5-5 five, five with Death Touch and costs one less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. The reason why I mentioned Husk Burster Swarm is that it cares about creature cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. So no matter what, if you're a self-mill deck, and your graveyard has been exiled, this is still a, a heavily discounted big body with menace and death touch. Um, so if you care about elementals or perhaps insects um, and you're in a self mill deck, so probably the insect, I guess, would probably be the more important creature type there, then this can be playable in your commander deck. Next, we have Iridescent Vine Lasher, one mana, one, two, Lizard Assassin with offspring for two. Landfall, whenever land you control enters, this creature deals one damage to target opponent. Um, we've seen this before with Retreat to Hagra. So if you're in landfall decks without red, um, typically red is more efficient at dealing damage off of landfall triggers. Um, but if you're in black, you're not in red, and you're looking for landfall payoffs, then this is an option for you. Then we have Insatiable Frugivore, from a 2-4, Rat Berserker, when it enters, create a food token, then you may exile three cards from a graveyard. If you do repeat this process, that's interesting, we can pay four and sacrifice X foods. Creature control, get plus X, plus zero, and gain menace until end of turn. So with this creature, I think that the average base case is that you probably have um, six to nine cards in your graveyard, right? So let's just take the nine figure to be a little bit more generous. So I think that this will essentially, on average, come down for four mana. It will create a food token, and then you'll probably exile three cards uh, out of your graveyard three times, so nine cards out of your graveyard. Also, it should be noted that you want to care about creating the foods more than the cards in your graveyard. This can be a little bit awkward in the decks that want cards in their graveyard to reanimate because you're getting rid of them. Um, so if you care about creating Creating essentially four foods for four mana. Um, this is an option for you. Also, it can be used as a generic food payoff as well to be an overrun for your uh, creatures. So the decks that you might find this in, of course, if you care about the rat creature type, um, I think that you know you. Often you, when you and you have rat colonies, they end up dying a lot because they have such low toughness and they end up in your graveyard. So you might be able to um, exile quite a few of those if you've encountered a few board wipes throughout the game. So um, an ash coat might make sense to have insatiable frugivore, frugivore in. And of course, if you're in a food go wide deck, I think this could be a shoo in as well, more just for the overrun abil uh, activated ability there. So um, Sam and Frodo are sort of stand ins for those. Um, go wide food type of decks. So that brings us to the end of our black card set review for Bloomberg Bloomberg Commander. What are the top three most playable and or frequent cards that you might see? And I think that that is Season of Loss, Maha is Feathers Knight, and Hazel's Brewmaster. Season of Loss, by far and away, the number one um, card you're going to see the most out of the set. Uh, Maha, I think, is going to be more played as like a board wipe or pseudo board wipe. It's kind of interesting. Um, I think that this card might be one of those like semi outlawed cards uh, because I mean, it doesn't get rid of your cards like something like Turgrid decks will. I mean, it has the same sort of vibe as a Turgrid deck, right? Like immediately enable um, all of these effects to uh, force your opponents to essentially just not be able to play the game with creatures. Um, and then, of course, I think Hazel's Brewmaster, you're just going to see it in combo decks with the Voter Druid and Kiki Jiki. Um, so any sort of perhaps C CEDH decks or on the higher end of the power curve for optimized casual. So with that, that brings us to the end of our black set review. If you like this video, leave a like on it and subscribe. I really appreciate it and it helps me out. Um, and with that, we have the red and green videos to still get through. Um, again, I'll have all of the other videos linked in the description below for all of the other colored set reviews that I've done. Um, and if you want, you could go check this out. So hopefully uh, with that, I guess I'll wrap up the video and hopefully we'll see you all in the next set review. Bye-bye, everybody.